smoking ritual. We need to celebrate, nigga. I thought you were dead. <laughs> and he set it up. It was beautiful. It was just like I dreamed. We was all sitting around. Them Indians was beating the drum. <laughs> Some other Indians came out the back with a long blanket that was folded in half and put in, in front of us. Open that shit up, and on the blanket was a long wooden pipe with feathers. And bags of weed were all over the blanket. <laughs> Chief walked over. The big ones are 50. The little ones are 25. <laughs> and these are 10. Me and those Indians got high as shit. I was baked. I told the chief, he was talking, I cut him off. Time out, chief. Sorry to interrupt. Fucking smash, man. The weed's too strong. I'm itching. Is this PCP? The, the spirits have got me. Chief, the spirits have got me. And the chief threw some water in my face. Calm down, blackface. Splash. I said, hey, it's black feet, motherfucker. Take it easy. Blackfeet, you're welcome to stay amongst me and my tribe for the night until the spirits leave you. And they gave me my own teepee to sleep in, which sounds nice. I personally felt like it was a little fucked up, you know, because they all had houses, man. It's like, why can't I sleep with y'all in the house and watch TV? Like, I can't be on this grass all night. Yeah, Indians is rude, man. Now, everybody's rude. Indians, they eat nasty food. All they ate was corn and shit. <laughs> Doritos, I think they call them. <laughs> That's right. People only see the surface. They see the division in our foods. It's because I eat chicken and watermelon. <laughs> they think that that's something wrong with me. Let me tell you something. If you don't like chicken or watermelon, Something's wrong with you, motherfucker. There's something wrong with you. Where are all these people that don't like chicken and watermelon? I'm sick of hearing about how bad it is. It's great. I'm waiting for chicken to approach me to do a commercial, nigga. I will do I'll do it for free, chicken. It's the least I can do. They make fun of Latin people for eating, uh, what y'all eat? Beans, rice, corn. Listen, that's not a reason to hate a motherfucker, all right? It's funny, but it's not a reason to hate. The only reason these things are even an issue is because nobody knows what white people eat. You've been very good at keeping that shit a secret amongst yourselves. I study white people. You don't know that. I'm writing a paper on you. Not even for school, nigga, just to do it. Just to get some, just doing this independent research. I'm spending my money, that's why I'm working so hard. I follow you around grocery stores. They freak out. I just try to peek in the cart. They always say, get away from my cart, nigga. What are you looking at? <laughs> Chicken and giblets are over there. You must be lost. These are vegetables. I know what you drink. See how quiet it got? <laughs> grape juice. Surprise, motherfuckers. You didn't know I knew about grape juice, did you? Oh, don't play dumb with me. Looking, what? What is A lot of black people don't have the privilege of knowing about grape juice because they have great drink. It's not the same formula that you get. <laughs> Ain't no vitamins in that shit. You might have one of your black friends over, Todd. Todd? Would you care for a glass of grape juice? What? <laughs> Nigga, what the fuck is juice? <laughs> I want some grape drink, baby. Mm, it's purple. I don't think I know what a grape drink is. What? I have some apple juice if you want. What the fuck is juice? <laughs> I want some apple drink. <laughs> Scream. Remember that commercial for Sunny Delight when all the kids run in from outside playing? And they all run to the fridge. 
All right. I got some purple stuff, some Sunny D. As soon as they say Sunny D, all the kids go, yeah! Watch the black kid in the back. If you ever see that commercial again, look at that black kid. He'd be like, I want that purple stuff. <laughs> I, that's drink, nigga. That is drink. They want, they want drink. I want all them vitamins, nigga. I want drink. Sugar, water, purple. <laughs> that's the ingredient, sugar, water, and of course, purple. too fucking much. I got a lot of things to talk about tonight. First of all, I've stopped smoking weed. With black people, you didn't let me finish, motherfuckers. God damn. I'm sorry, black people, to, to break the news so publicly, but I can't smoke with you anymore. Every time I smoke weed with my black friends, all you talk about is your trials and tribulations. I'm sick of that shit. I got my own problems. Nigga, that's a waste of weed. I'm smoking weed to run away from my problems, not take on yours. From now on, I smoke weed exclusively with white people. <laughs> Calm down, motherfuckers. You win by default. <laughs> you got good weed conversation. All white people talk about when they get high is other times that they got high. I can listen to that shit all night. Dude, remember at Frank's last week? It's fucking smashed, man. <laughs> and catalogs everything they drink. Like two shots of Jaeger. <laughs> tequila. Four bong hits, man. <laughs> Beer. Cheeseburger. That shit is great. Only bad part is you cannot pass out around white people. Every time white dudes pass out around each other. They always do some borderline gay shit when the guy's asleep. <laughs> Frank fell asleep, so he like stuck a carrot in his ass and put shaving cream on his balls. Like, why, motherfucker? Why would you do that to a friend of yours? He trusted you enough to sleep around you. You gonna put a carrot in his ass? Is that, is that nice? I tell you right now, if I put a carrot in a black dude's ass, a nigga will kill you when he wakes up for some shit like that. That is an automatic death sentence on the street. It's a rap for you. I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. I thought y'all was friends, baby. What happened? I, I, I fell asleep at his house, right? We was drinking, and I fell asleep at his house, and, and while I was sleeping, right? I'm just gonna kill that motherfucker, all right? That's all you need to know. And fuck carrots. But everybody's getting along. I see that shit, I see it all around. Blacks and whites don't fight so much. You know who don't have no beef with anybody is Asian people. I see how y'all be doing. Y'all just lay in the cut. Only, only, time, only people Asian people beef with is other Asian people. Like if you call a Korean guy Chinese, I've done this, they will flip out, hey! What make you think I'm Chinese? Korean! I look Chinese. Yes, motherfucker, you do look Chinese. That's why I said it. It's an accident. Nigga, to the untrained eye, you all look Chinese to me. It's a mistake. I'm not trying to offend you. Some people say all black people look alike. We don't get bent out of shape. We normally just call those people police, okay? <laughs> just learn to live with it. That's all I can tell you. Everybody's afraid of police now. Scared to death of these police. I am, nigga. I, I got a police scanner. First, first, first money I got, this is the first shit I went out, bought me a police scanner. I just listen to these motherfuckers before I go out, just to make sure everything's cool. You hear shit on it. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Be on the lookout for a black male between 4'7 and 6'8. <laughs> Staying in the crib tonight, fuck that. <laughs> Gotta work on that alibi for a minute. Every black person needs an alibi. I, I do them impromptu joints. If I'm by myself and need out, I'll, I'll just open up the windows in the apartment, turn all the lights on, start beating off right in the window. Look at me. <laughs> hey, everybody, look, it's me. Dave Chappelle, I'm crazy. I'm jerking off. In the... Note the time, motherfuckers. It's 2.35. Look at me. I'm jerking off in the window. 2.35. Comedian Dave Chappelle, it's June 10th. Note the time.
That shit could save my life. Officer David Chappelle couldn't have done that. I saw him in his window masturbating from 235 to 237. I'm certain of it. He was standing on a clock and holding a calendar and today's paper. <laughs> Fuck, I need an alibi. I can't be no celebrity. This shit is just the worst. I'm seeing it. I can see why, I see why stars are crazy, man. These motherfuckers. I went to Disney World with my kids, which is a big deal for me. I don't get to see my kids so much. I do Chappelle's show 20 hours a day. Sleep for like half an hour, raise my kids for 10, 20 minutes, and I go back to work. Now. This particular day, I got to hook up with the kids. We went to Disney World. Everybody at the park, fucking everybody. Hey, hey, I'm Rick James, bitch. Hey, I'm Rick James, bitch. It's like, hey, man, hey, you mind not calling me a bitch in front of my kids? Time out, motherfucker. We take a day off. Even Mickey Mouse did it. I said, this is the most unprofessional shit I have ever seen in my life. Rick James, bitch. <laughs> oh, I was fed up. I caught that motherfucker with the uppercut. Bop! Knocked his head clean off. Everybody was screaming. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mickey Mouse is Mexican. Terrible time in Disney World. Disney World is like a whole nother country anyway. They got their own currency. That shit is ridiculous. As soon as I check in the hotels, welcome to Disney World, Mr. Chappelle. Can we interest you in some Disney dollars? <laughs> nah, man, I'm cool. <laughs> Can't buy weed and pussy with Disney dollars. Like, I'm on vacation. <laughs> I like them greenbacks. I like them green bags, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the kind of money people spend. It's people it's very particular about that. I saw that, that was one of the main stories from the war. It was the first big thing we did was they said, now that Iraq has been liberated, we have managed to take Saddam Hussein's face off of the money. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, when that press conference came off, I was like choked up. I was, I was actually proud to be an American because that is a very, subtle psychological nuance of oppression to have a dictator on your money. And it's thoughtful to be able to take that motherfucker off for the goodwill of another person, right? But then I thought, well, if you could do that for Iraq, what about our money, man? Yeah. Our money looked like baseball cards with slave owners on. <laughs> George Washington is the worst of the worst. Yes, I said it. He mythologized this motherfucker like he was the greatest dude, man. If I went back in time with a white person and we saw George Washington walking in front of our time machine, my white friend would probably be like, oh my God, Dave, look, there's George Washington. It's the father of this great nation. I'm gonna go shake his hand. I'd be on the other side like, run, nigga, George Washington. <laughs> and we'd both be right. You like him because he wrote the Declaration of Independence and all that shit. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. Go get me a sandwich, nigger, or I'll kill you. <laughs> Liberty, justice for all. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Wait a minute, did he not own slaves? Didn't he own slaves? That's, my, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I almost protested the war in the beginning. Almost. Until I saw what happened to them Dixie chicks. I said, fuck that. <laughs> If they'll do that to three white women, they will tear my black ass to pieces. I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah, man, they would. But I'm like, for real, why do why you care so much what the Dixie Chicks say? They're not like they political scientists or nothing. They just bitches that can sing good. You know what I mean? Stop worshiping celebrities so much. Just don't listen, pay attention. I remember right around September 11th, uh, Ja Rule was on MTV. That's what they said. They said, we got Ja Rule on the phone. Let's see what Jaws' thoughts are on this tragedy. Who gives a fuck what Jaws rule thinks at a time like this, nigga? This is ridiculous. I don't want to dance. I'm scared to death. I want some answers that Jaws rule might not have right now. You think when bad shit happens to me, I'll be in the crib like, oh my God, this is terrible. Cause somebody please find 
Ja Rule get hold of this motherfucker so I can make sense of all this? Where is Ja? Add me, Ja Rule. I don't even know why people listen to me. I'll say anything, nigga. I've done commercials for Coke and Pepsi. I don't give a fuck what comes out of my mouth. I just say what it takes. Whatever it takes, that's what I'm saying. If you want to know the truth, can't even taste the difference. Surprise! All I know was Pepsi paid me most recently, so it tastes better. That's pretty much how the game goes. I'm just being real, man. It's too much goo gag and over celebrities. People don't know was fake and what's real anymore. That's why Bill Cosby got in trouble. Look what happened to Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby said some real shit and the whole world freaked out on him. For what? For having an opinion? Just because he was selling pudding pops for the last 40 years, people forget that he's a nigga from Philly in the projects and he might say some real shit from time to time. It's not that big of a deal. I spoke at my old high school and I told them kids straight up, if you guys are serious about making it out of this ghetto, you gotta focus, you gotta stop blaming white people for your problems, and you've, you've gotta learn how to rap or play basketball or something, nigga, you're trapped. You are trapped. Either do that or sell crap. That's your only option. That's the only way I've ever seen it work. You better get to entertaining these white people, nigga. Get to dancing. Go on out there and be somebody. I just hope they listen. <laughs> this shit is ridiculous. People worship television. They worship this shit. You know, like if you watch a movie, right? Say you're watching a movie and one character says to another character, say, hey, uh, what's your number, man? What's the other character always say? Five, 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 five. You know why we gotta do that? Because stupid ass people go to the movies and then go home and try to call the characters that they just saw. Hello, is Indiana Jones here? No, motherfucker, he's fake. It's not his number. <laughs> and to be honest, this is the worst time in history to be a black celebrity. Fuck, they locking all our stars up. It's hot right now for black celebrities. I knew it was bad when Kobe got in trouble. I said, this is a wrap for us. He's one of the most wholesome dudes we had. <laughs> Lock him up and everything. And Kobe kept it together. Thank God he, he held his game together because if he was cracking under pressure and getting like six points a game, the whole LA would have been like, that nigger is guilty. <laughs> Kobe was playing his ass off. He was playing like his freedom depended on that shit. You see this motherfucker in them games, this nigga's trying to beat that case on the court. That nigga... <laughs> like the judge threw him the ball, like, play for your freedom. <laughs> if I could talk to Kobe, I'd be like, just relax, you'll be fine, man. Cause the public is still giving Kobe the benefit of the doubt. He's one of the few black celebrities that get that. Not because he's a celebrity, more because, you know, the girl showed up with eight different Siemens to the investigation. You can't do that. <laughs> That's seven too many. That's a lot of semen, man. This bitch got Noah's Ark and her panties. Like, what, you trying to recreate humanity or something? She's a collector. She got every unsolved mystery. The answer might be in this girl's paint. That's the first place I look. OJ's other gloves in there. Bigfoot's footprint. Three CSI reruns is in that motherfucker. <laughs> we got the most diabolical draws ever. Fuck being a celebrity. It's not the time to be a black star. They locking all our stars up. Black celebrities, this is a witch hunt for us, man. God damn it. It's all OJ's fault. <laughs> Ever since OJ got away, white people have just been locking up our stars one by one. It's true. And it's all, it's not even OJ's fault, it's our fault. We celebrated too openly when OJ got acquitted. We should have been quiet about that shit. As soon as they're not guilty, niggas just dancing. Oh, in your face, nigga, in your face. It hurts, don't it? It hurts. Burn, 
burns, doesn't it, nigga? Ooh, that justice system burns, doesn't it? Welcome to my world, motherfucker, all that shit. White people wanted OJ's ass bad. City of LA spent over $12 million just trying that motherfucker. And the look on white people's face when he was acquitted, priceless. <laughs> priceless. <laughs> and that's why I don't trip off of being a celebrity. I don't like it. I don't trust it. There's one minute they all love you, and the next thing you know, you're in front of that courthouse dancing on top of a car just trying to figure out what the fuck happened to you. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for, because the timing of this Michael Jackson shit is what makes me doubt it. Every time this war is going out of control, or the economy gets bad, or something is wrong with the world at large, it's always these moments in history that Michael Jackson will coincidentally jerk off a kid. This is getting a little ridiculous. Like, are you planning this shit? Do you have meetings? Michael, thank you for coming. As you know, Michael, the war has not been going as well as we expected. There's been a lot of hiccups, and the public is asking us a lot of questions, of course, and, well, Michael, there's no nice way to say this, and all I know how to do is be direct, so let me just be direct. We're gonna need you to jerk off another child, Mike. I'm sorry. I am sorry. But it would really help out. Or maybe he did it, who knows? Who knows? That's the thing. That's what I wanted to say. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Mike, God, and this little boy know. That's, that's about it. That's about it. The only reason that I can even talk about this shit is because everybody is speculating. They all think he did it. And I don't think he did it. I'm alone in this. I don't think he did it. I'm not going to say I don't think he did it. That's too strong. <laughs> Let me just say I am reserving judgment until all the facts come out. <laughs> but so far from what I heard, I mean, the kid said he was dying of cancer, he was in Make-A-Wish Foundation, he claims he had two weeks to live, and it was his dying wish to meet Michael Jackson. Come on, man, give me a fucking break. This kid is 10 years old, he don't remember Thriller. The fuck you want to meet Michael Jackson for, honestly? <laughs> I remember Thriller, and I just, like, kinda want to meet this nigga, like. I wouldn't break an appointment to meet him. I'll put it that way. I'd have to already be free. That's ridiculous. It's like if I'm dying in two weeks and go, oh, mama, oh, get me in a room with Chubby Chuckle. I wouldn't want to meet that motherfucker. Not, my lay is two weeks. Why not Usher or somebody like this? So then the kid claims he goes to Michael's house. This is where it all gets crazy. I don't, like, you know, he does everything you'd expect at Michael's house. They uh, climbed trees and rode roller coasters and Ferris wheels. The chef made cookies, pies, and cakes. They was petting a monkey and a giraffe, sang songs, kid shit. And in the middle of all this childlike activity, for some reason, Mike pulled out some wine and some pills <laughs> and sucked this kid's dick. <laughs> Folks, it hurts me to say it. And the kid had the nerve to call that abuse. Motherfucker, that is a good host. God damn, what else do you want? What else do you want? I'm lucky to get a glass of a, a grape drink at my friend's house. Let alone a roller coaster ride and my dick sucked. Mike must be confused like I brought you in my house, I fed you, I sucked your dick, and this is how you repay me, motherfucker? This was your wish, not mine. I thought you were dying in two weeks. What happened to that motherfucker? Was, I've been in court for a year and a half. You get strong every time I see you. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that, <laughs> this is fucked up. I shouldn't even say this fuck. Wouldn't it be some ironic shit if they found out through this case that the cure for cancer was Michael Jackson sucking your dick somehow? Like if Mike had powers like Green Mile and all the kids like, please, Mike, suck our dicks, mm, never again. <laughs> he didn't appreciate it. Can we at least study your saliva? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Please, Mike.
It just doesn't stop, though. It just doesn't stop. And the only reason I can talk about Mike is because he's a freak. He is a freak. <laughs> That's why people let you talk about him. Because if I brought up Catholic priest fucking kids, it'd get quiet as shit. But, <laughs> but when Michael Jackson does it, it's okay because he's a freak. His face is all cut up. But just remember, when you look at that thing that he calls his face, <laughs> that he did that for you somehow. Somehow he thought you might, maybe it'll help. Maybe people will like me more if I turn my...